evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Board of Education regular meeting, Wednesday, May 22nd. Are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, yes we are. Take the roll, please. Herzog? Here. Hess? Here. Zalaji? Here. Wright? Here. Wyman? Here. Carlin? Here. DeWitt? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to invite two of our students from uh, Lakeside Elementary School to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our students this evening are from Lakeside Elementary School. We have Madison Lee and Corbell Bryce. I'd like to thank you both for coming this evening and leading us and uh, doing your school proud. And if you'd like to stay, your principal Mrs. Action is going to be telling us about all the wonderful things that are happening at Lakeside Elementary School. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Mrs. Ashton. Well, hello everyone. It's great to see you. Thank you for having me back. Um, I am very excited tonight to share information with you about our school year. We have had a fantastic school year at Lakeside, and I am extremely proud of the school, our staff, and students at Lakeside. I have a few highlights to share with you, and I'm going to start with literacy. So. First of all, I want you to know that we have great growth in literacy and increased levels of proficiency. We just finished iReady testing and our students this year have already made collectively 146% growth. That's collectively first grade through fifth grade. Um, our goal at the end of the year is to make collectively 100% growth, so, so we are thrilled. In addition, 61% of our students in grades one through five are proficient at or above grade level. Our growth and proficiency over time has been trending upward and I am so excited to see that in our data. In math, we are thrilled to see a significant progress in our proficiency levels. The last three years, our proficiency levels for grades three through five was around 57% and at the same level for three years. This year, our proficiency for students in grades one through five is 63%. And if we just counted our students in grades three through five who have taken the assessment over and over, um, we would have 71% proficiency. And those are kids that um, have taken the test over and over again. Um, our growth for students in math grades one through five is 110% growth. So over that 100% mark. We are absolutely thrilled with this end of the year data um, and it shows that we are growing and achieving higher proficiency levels at Lakeside. Our staff Gallup poll from earlier this year also shows that Lakeside staff is showing very high levels of engagement and the engagement levels are in the 87th percentile um, nationally, they're in the 30 range, right? So we are also excited about that data. As a school, we prioritized continuing to learn and grow by setting action steps toward that goal. This year, our staff engaged in learning walks to observe each other's teaching practices and the practices of other teachers in our school district. Our staff found this to be incredibly beneficial. The learning walks served as a way to directly impact students by embedding powerful practices observed by others into instruction. We attribute those learning walks along with our professional development and our co-planning data as our celebrations in why our data is shifting at Lakeside Elementary. Our school also celebrates interest hour on a quarterly basis. Interest Hour allows students choice in playful, learning, engaging opportunities for learning experiences. This year, our Interest Hours have focused on areas like creativity and building, wellness, technology, and community partnerships. 
we are excited, I'm sure the students behind me can attest, excited that we are celebrating our last interest hour this upcoming Friday with partners like the Oshkosh Public Library, Oshkosh Defense, the Winnebago County Extension, Festival Foods, Arise Wellness, and more. So we are super excited about that event to come. And at Lakeside, we continue to build strong connections and relationships with all students. We persist in learning and continue to grow. I am so proud of all of the work that is happening at our school and welcome you to visit at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Your enthusiasm is contagious. We right? appreciate it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lakeside School. Land acknowledgement. Yes, as we gather today, we'd like to acknowledge that in Oshkosh, we are on the ancestral homelands of the whole chunk Nation and Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin, who lived along the western shores of Lake Winnebago, Wisconsin's largest freshwater lake entirely within its borders. We acknowledge these indigenous sovereign communities who have stewarded this land throughout the generations and pay respect to their elders, past and present. We welcome the duty and opportunity to share stewardship of these lands. Thank you very much. And next, the approval of the agenda. I do have uh, two items that a board member would like pulled. That's number 11, number 12. And we have three other individually considered resolutions. Anything else as far as approval of the agenda? Nope. Okay, we will go with this. Thank you very much. Uh, board President's report. I want to say thank you to everyone that had a part in the celebrating abilities, rallying everyone, care days. You can see all of the salmon color shirts around the room. A wonderful day for our special needs students who had just an awesome day with mentors, uh, assistants, and uh, Mrs. Piran was is the head of the whole thing, and it was uh, really an event. Uh, to be seen and to, most importantly to celebrate the inclusivity of the students um, and everyone that helped along. So thank you very, very much for that. I'd like to welcome Troop 610. We have four students here tonight that are getting their merit badge. We have two from Val Phillips and two from Carl Traeger. So welcome and they will be listening to our meeting tonight and learning more about civic engagement and leadership. So thank you very much for being here. As we get to the end of the year, I'd like to thank all of the teachers, the staff, the support staff, administration, and the students for a, just a fantastic year. You heard Mrs. Ashton talk about what a great year we've had, and it really sets us up for next year. We're excited to hear the results from this year, and that will happen next month. And I just want to take a moment to thank everyone, including the board, for everyone's part in making this uh, district even better. I have two retirements for this evening. The first one is Lisa Hart. She is an IST literacy interventionist from Emmeline Cook. And she's been with the district since 1994. And Ginger Tareen, family and consumer science teacher, Perry Tipler. And she has been with the district since 1992. Would any board members like to say anything? Dr. Herzog? Thank you, Mrs. Wyman. Um, once again, we we have the honor of thanking two longtime staff members who have contributed greatly to the growth of our students and have made an impact on families in our community. So I just want to wish both of these teachers a, a very long, happy, and happy retirement. Uh, Ginger Tureen made history when she came into the district and was featured in some news stories. Um, and she's just someone whom I have the greatest respect for, along with Mrs. Hart. So thank you and congratulations to both of these retirees. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Beth, um, point of order. Yes. Did we make a motion and a second to approve the agenda? Oh. I no. think we did it by accident. Did, did we? By yeah. accident. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. And Superintendent, good news report. All right. Um, as has been previously mentioned, a lot of great things going on across the district. So, uh, first of all, I want to talk about the uh, youth leadership Oshkosh, Oshkosh North and West Juniors. Um, 
uh, who completed the Youth Leadership Oshkosh program recently celebrated their accomplishments with a graduation ceremony. Each of these students spent one Friday a month learning about how their community and how to lead within Oshkosh. Uh, throughout this year together they built relationships invested in their community and developed their leadership skills so congratulations to all of the students uh, who are the graduates from the youth leadership oshkosh this school year congratulations to three oshkosh west seniors who are re who recently signed letters of intent to play college athletics next school year uh, brenna will be playing uh, basketball at uw stevens point laney will be playing soccer at uw oshkosh and hannah will be playing soccer at uw whitewater so we look forward to seeing these uh, student athletes continue to shine in their college experiences. Congratulations, ladies. During the month of May, Merrill and Webster Stanley Elementary Schools um, offered Makerspace Mondays. Uh, third through fifth graders were given the option of going to the media center during their recess to complete Makerspace challenges. The challenges uh, were, you, uh, were to use certain materials to create different objects. It was fun to see the collaboration between students and their creativity with the materials that was provided. Uh, we heard from Lakeside earlier, uh, but another shout out, Lakeside Elementary uh, fifth graders recently hosted a market day. Uh, they created their own currency and product lines to sell at student run stores. From homemade jewelry to bookmarks to creative invention, these young business owners uh, impressed everyone who was involved. Very cool, cool to see all the young small, uh, small business owners and CEOs in the making. Uh, kindergartners at Roosevelt Elementary recently published their first book. They each wrote how to page. Uh, to celebrate the book, they hosted a class showcase uh, and each student was able to read their page to the class mm -hmm. um, and to their family members. So awesome job, kindergartners at Roosevelt. And it is graduation uh, season. Uh, we kicked that off over at Riverside, um, at the Riverside campus. So last week we celebrated the resilience and accomplishments of 51 graduates from Oshkosh North and Oshkosh West who are enrolled in our Riverside program. <coughs> Riverside is a unique partnership with Fox Valley Tech focused on giving students an alternative high school experience where they can thrive based on their unique needs. Highlights from the ceremony included inspiring remarks from student speakers, as well as guest speakers who encouraged grads not to let anyone decide what they're capable of, reminding them that they already have proven that they can overcome obstacles. So I uh, had an opportunity to attend that um, ceremony and it was, uh, again, inspiring and congratulations to those graduates. Uh, we also have uh, more award-winning uh, staff, um, and so this is probably not a surprise, but we're, we're super proud um, of this uh, announcement. Our very own choir teacher at Oshkosh North, Mrs. Bridget Duff Duffy Ulrich, is a quarter finalist for the 2025 Grammy Music Educator Award. This is a big deal. Um, Bridget was nominated by her students for this incredible national honor. The award recognizes her passion for music, dedication for her, to her craft, and commitment to creating inclusive and engaging classroom. Bridget was one of only 215 quarter finalists chosen from 2,400 nominations across the country. Um, so join us in congratulating uh, this rock star educator. So congratulations to Bridget for that accomplishment. And we're hopefully she goes to the finals and shows up on the Grammys, which That's would be right. a, a lot of fun. But quarterfinals is something to be proud of for sure. Um, as was mentioned earlier, today uh, the district came together for our eighth annual Care Days, celebrating uh, abilities and rallying everyone. This inclusive, inspiring, inclusive event uh, brought together over 350 students, including 150 who received adaptive physical education services um, for our region's largest public school district event of this kind. Participants competed in an exciting track and field meet while a lively carnival with games, activities, and a dunk tank uh, provided nonstop fun. Operated by students at Oshkosh West and the communities program at Oshkosh North, Care Days fosters meaningful and inclusion, and inclusion and peer connections while celebrating the abilities of all the children in our community. So special thank you to all of our students, staff, and supporters who made this event possible. As a reminder, each month we have new episodes of our Mission Keepers, our district podcast. Uh, the latest episode features Ma Mary Gabriel, a special education teacher at Oshkosh West High School, Beth Schendel, uh, principal at our Oshkosh Early Learning, and Amy Monigal, uh, elementary school technology coach. Tune in to hear how uh, the Oshkosh Area School District employees are finding joy and empowering their lives. 
And uh, as we get to, again, the end of the year, graduation season, we're excited to honor our class of 2024 during the graduation ceremonies at UW Oshkosh Golf Sports Center uh, this Saturday, uh, May 25th. Please join us in celebrating the many accomplishments of our graduates and wishing them all the best. The entire Oshkosh community is invited uh, and encouraged to experience the graduation ceremonies virtually. The live stream links are available on the screen and on the district website. So congratulations to all of our graduates coming up. Uh, and finally, just a list of activities uh, over the last couple of weeks that I've been blessed to be able to participate in. So uh, we've had a great end to, of the school year and just want to thank everybody for their hard work uh, right to the end. So and that concludes the superintendent's good news report for tonight. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Now we have a verbal report from the May 8th board listening session mm -hmm. by Dr. Coleman. All right, good evening. Uh, one individual participated in the May 8th listening session. The participant asked questions about how behavior and discipline is handled on Cobus and buses uh, compared to Go Transit buses. The participant asked questions on suspension data and discipline data and the participants shared data charts on suspensions and asked administration to look into the data for the buildings identified. The participants suggested to focus on reading assistance and not more police officers in schools, and the participant asked about special summer reading programming planned. Uh, the working strategies uh, in the equity plan will and are addressing many of the concerns that the individual raised. Summer programming plan for reading includes the addition of summer school classrooms at the Boys and Girls Club, where students will engage in literacy, camp, and big math. Uh, Director Miller is working on an extended summer program uh, opportunity through Oakland CLC grant that is focused on reading. Uh, and that completes the listening session summary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kemmer, an Annual Wellness Committee and Policy Update. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So every year, <coughs> as a district, we're required to review, uh, update, and provide recommendations for Policy 8510, which is our wellness policy. So um, what we do to satisfy uh, our requirements within the policy is we have our wellness committee meet um, once per year usually in spring to review the policy um, we also do a survey for our principals which serves as a self-assessment for compliance purposes related to the policy and then during our committee meeting uh, we talk through any recommendations that anyone on the committee has so our committee met up on April 30th and that committee is made up of um, district administrators as well as our school nurse staff uh, representatives from food service, teachers, community partners, and parents. So one of the things that we do first and foremost is review the, the goals of our wellness policy. So there are five goals. Um, I'm going to quickly read through those um, just because they really put the main components of the policy uh, in perspective. So the first is to promote nutrition education with the objective of improving students' health and reducing childhood obesity. The second is to improve the health and well-being of our children, uh, increase consumption of healthful foods during the school day, and create an environment that reinforces the development of healthy eating habits. The third is to promote nutrition guidelines, a healthy eating environment, uh, child nutrition programs, and food safety and security on each school campus with the objective of promoting student health and reducing childhood obesity. Uh, number four is providing opportunities for every student to develop the knowledge and skills for specific physical activities, maintain physical fitness, regularly participate in physical activity, and understand the short and long-term benefits of physically active lifestyle. And then finally, number five is to promote the health and wellness of students and staff through um, other school-based activities. So uh, based on what we discussed, the team felt that these goals continued to be appropriate in that um, the district is satisfying um, these goals through the, the policies and practices that we have in place. Um, so uh, when those are broken down even further, um, we look at nutrition education, physical activity, which is also divided into physical education and food services for the self-assessment that's conducted by our principals. Um, so in completing that self-assessment, uh, there are a number of areas that um, principals rate on a scale of 
uh, four, which indicates that that component is pl in place all the way down to one, which would indicate that that component is not in place. So um, when you look through all of the areas that were assessed, the majority of our schools are in compliance with either a four or a three. Any school that rated themselves as a one or a two in any area, uh, we are going to be following up with the school to see, um, determine what we need to do to make sure that's in place. In some instances, it may be in place, uh, but either it was misinterpreted or there's information that the principal uh, isn't aware of um, that may factor in and make that uh, actually reflective of a, a three or a four. So with that, uh, in addition to uh, reviewing that information, uh, the team did have three primary recommendations. So the first recommendation was to communicate key components of the policy to principals on a more frequent basis so they know what they should be looking out for and assessing. Um, the second recommendation was uh, to make sure schools do not remove recess as a consequence for students um, due to misbehavior. And then finally, the, the final recommendation was to incorporate mental wellness into this policy. Questions? I just want to say thank you, especially for that part of not taking away recess as a form of punishment. I think that's really important. Oftentimes what kids who need redirection for their behavior really need is a recess or um, an opportunity to move their body in a physical way. So right. I just not a question, but just thank you for seeing that as a priority. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to thank you and the committee for their work, and I like, like Mrs. Szilagyi, I like the fact that um, the group has addressed the notion of making sure that a recess is not provided as a consequence or a punishment. And I also appreciate that you've identified something to improve the policy, namely incorporating mental well wellness into that, and I'm sure the policy committee will be happy to address that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Social emotional learning ES3 grant, Ms. Piran. In my charity's wardrobe. Um, <laughs> just letting you know that we are in our final year of our grant and we've been really pleased that we got that grant. We've been able to um, coach and work with certain students and use um, evidence-based practices to really hopefully improve student behavior and really train our teachers. So. Um, we're in our final year of that and we've been really grateful to do some of the Elena Aguilar coaching with our PSTs and our coaches and just it's always nice to get free money that we can use for staff <coughs> development to improve student behavior and outcomes. Do you see an opportunity for a future grant? We apply for every grant possible <laughs> like especially when we see social emotional learning and we look at the behaviors um, in especially at our elementary levels we work really closely with Matt and the SEL team and look at any opportunities we can to provide equitable opportunities and anything to increase time in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Technology plan, five-year outlook. Mr. Schmidt. All right, thank you and good evening. Um, so you have a copy of our five-year technology plan. Uh, the purpose of this document is really to give us some guidance for some of the things that we have going on throughout the district. So uh, as you know, uh, the process of delivering education has changed significantly over the past 5, 10, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. and that results in um, more investment that we need to make as a, as a district in order to make our learning materials more accessible. Uh, so you'll see in the report um, what, our, what our plan for outlined expenditures over the course of the next few years. Uh, we have a 10-year sustainable technology budget that we have projected out uh, for the planned obsolescence of some of these tools and when those things are going to need to be upgraded. Uh, you'll also note in there that this is uh, this is a part of some of our KPIs with our strategic plan. Uh, so when we're talking about our five-year technology plan, uh, that's that's measured uh, by the by one of our KPIs. Uh, the measurement tool that we used for that is the Bright Bites survey. That survey has been discontinued, and there's no longer an option for us to do that. So we will be working towards developing um, a different tool to measure the effectiveness of the technology that we have uh, within our environment. So we'll have more to come on that as, as time goes on. I'd be interested to hear any questions. 
want you to know I deleted my two Norton antivirus uh, scammy emails today. Oh, so. good. <laughs> yes. Nice job, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Herzog. Thank you. Uh, I see under uh, major points in this report, it's under letter A, uh, under student Chromebooks, it notes for your replacement cycle for various devices and it also includes for 2024 middle school and paraprofessional devices. I know we had heard earlier this year both in a listening session and in a public forum in this room of an interest in our paraprofessionals to have, have access to mm -hmm. um, Chromebooks and I'm wondering if this addresses that or if there's more to that. Yep, uh, so thank you for asking that question. So uh, as you recall earlier this year we had some conversations around uh, providing devices for paraprofessionals. We were able to locate budget for that and purchase those devices at the, at the halfway point of the school year. Um, so I put those onto that replacement cycle with the middle school. Uh, we'll keep those for four years and then at the end of those four years they'll be due for a refresh and we'll replace them at that time. Wonderful. And was professional development then also provided for those who were interested in it if they were yes. getting a device for the first time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. we provided training when we deployed them uh, on how to access their devices, what are district expectations, all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ongoing throughout the school year, we've also had, and this actually started back in the fall, uh, where we were planning professional development and, make, and providing offerings for our paraprofessionals to be able to use the kinds of technology resources that we make available. Thank you for all of that. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you very much for addressing that issue. I know that that was that's a big deal for paraprofessionals, um, and that that's something they said would help them feel more included in a part of the district and to be able to be better uh, and it enable them to be better employees from what they said to us. So, thank you very much for doing that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Next, we have a committee reports. Education committee, Mrs. Salaji. Yes, so the Education Committee met twice this month. Um, I have three pages, four if you count front and back, worth of notes, but I've highlighted it. Um, and actually one of the first things we talked about was the update on the Bridges third edition for uh, elementary schools. And we had a report from the administrators last week on that, so I'll be really quick with that. Um, I think some of the highlights were just to learn that math starts with a warm-up, which allows students to be active and engaged right at the beginning of class before a lesson even starts. The third edition allows for more collaboration between students and an increased understanding um, and mathematical growth. It's student-centered and inquiry-based learning, and it provides advancing questions for a deeper dig into more challenging concepts. Um, we heard lots of positive things about the Bridges third edition update teacher saying it was more organized and more user friendly um, and we'll be voting on that tonight too later the second topic of that May 2nd meeting was block scheduling and this was one of the reasons we came back and had a second meeting because we felt like there was just a lot to be updated on this process and we wanted to be sure that we got all of it so I'll actually save those notes till I get to the next week um, the third thing that we talked about was the secondary math curriculum update of illustrative math at the middle school level. Uh, the request for this update actually came from teachers. They wanted a new resource because of the proficiency grading, uncovering some additional gaps in what we were providing our students. So the resource options included CPM and illustrative mathematics. They were both researched, including visits to classrooms in the Fox Valley where these curriculums are used. And the proposal that will be voted on tonight is for a 2024-2025 um, adoption of illustrative math. And again, that's going to be an individually considered resolution, so I think we'll have more time to discuss that and ask any questions that we have about that one. Um, so back to the block scheduling, because I felt that we were not able to give this the time that it needed in the first meeting. I asked that we meet again the following week to be sure to give the presenters and the school board members all the opportunity they needed to discuss this. So I just want to thank everyone who was willing to, with less than a week's notice, schedule a second meeting. It's not very often that the education committee meetings go over an hour. I think almost never. Um, but it's 
it's a busy time of year in May for education. So the notes between the two meetings on block scheduling, um, they were presented by Jackie Kiffmeyer and Alex Piester. And some basic information is that it's four by four blocks at the secondary level, so that's 90 minute courses with a combination of potentially of having some skinnies, which are 45 minute courses. So there'd be two 45 minute courses in that 90 minute block for some classes that need to run all school year. Um, class ratios would be one to 25. There'd be four blocks per semester, again, with the combination of blocks and skinnies. The advantages of block scheduling include um, the focus on meeting the needs of all learners with more time for small group instruction. So the like schedule of the class is changed and there's more opportunity for small group instruction and even throughout several times in the lesson. There's an increase in collaboration time for teachers because their planning time is a full 90 minute block. Um, there's less unstructured transitions between classes because now you'd go from seven to four so that reduces behaviors. There's more individualized support that can be provided by the teachers. There's increase in college, career, and community readiness. There are more course offerings because students would be going from seven to eight a year, which would also allow for more capstone experiences. Um, only having four courses a day would improve student mental health and teacher mental health because it just reduces the you know, workload for that day. And then it creates more flexibility in scheduling too. Um, one of the really interesting things we learned about this block scheduling is that there was a group called uh, Reimagining High School that was formed to research how high school could look differently to better meet the needs of both students and staff. Um, this group consisted of about 30 people, representative from across the board, and they were supposed to come up with ideas of what could be done differently to improve our high school outcomes. And it was actually within this group that block scheduling came up. So. I just really like that because it shows how it was an organic idea. It wasn't a top-down idea. Mm -hmm. It was collaboration between stakeholders that really wanted to improve our secondary education experience. Um, the group, I believe, started back in 2021. Uh, during the 2022-2023 years, they participated in nine meetings and they looked at other districts throughout the valley who do block scheduling. <coughs> Um, they visited some of those schools uh, and they realize if this is the path that we're going to take moving forward there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make sure it's intentional and implemented well uh, the initial timeline this is another thing I really valued was to implement it in 2025 but again as they looked at this task force looked at all the work that needs to be done in order to move to block scheduling they realize there's more need for professional development um, really one of the key things about moving to block scheduling is teachers really need to reimagine the way that they teach and so it was already pushed back to implementation in 2026 other things that we talked about like I said this really was a lot over two meetings um, is the potential for having high school students have required 28 credits for graduation rates again we looked at different schools across the valley that have that level of credits required for graduation rates also because they do the block scheduling this would allow it so that students um, can do more those more of those pr apprenticeships and work-based learning um, and so increase the number of students participating in apprenticeships and work-based learning in their you know junior and senior years let's see we talked about how this will require rigor and engagement and getting teachers to see um, that we're all on the same page defining the why sorry I know I'm going long um, so there was a suggestion made so some of the feedback because we did have a lot of questions and some of the things that came out of that feedback was to create a like frequently an FAQ page frequently asked questions um, that could address some of the fears or concerns that people have because we know that big changes often come with some resistance so that was another thing that we talked about is creating these big changes. There will need to be support um, from the school board to say that this is the path moving forward. Although we are not looking to vote on anything about block scheduling until the fall, if I remember correctly, is where we landed. Um, even though they will continue working on this plan through the summer, because again, that was one of the really highlights is that in order to make this effective, there needs to be some professional development around it right away. So we'll hear more about this in the fall and potentially have it as a vote. Nice. 
our Thank next you very much. meeting I should share is uh, in June, <coughs> June 6th at 7.30 and we'll get an update on the literacy curriculum adoption, which we were also supposed to talk about in May, but there was a lot and we didn't <coughs> get to it. Thank you very much for your very informative report. Uh, facilities and Finance, Dr. Herzog. Thank you, Mrs. Wyman. The <coughs> Facilities and Finance Committee met on Thursday, May 8th at 7.30 in the morning. Um, Mrs. Conrad Peters presented um, a recommendation that we update the title of the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion to be the Director of Community and in Community Engagement and Equity since the position has evolved in the last year. There were also adjustments to staffing numbers that were to come to the board in two phases. The first would have clearly excuse me, clearly defined revenue sources previously approved at the April 24th, 2024 Board of Education meeting. The second phase would entail additional post-secondary navigators, behavioral instructional support teachers, and an increase in the math coordinator position from 0.5 to 1.0. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Mrs. Johnson presented an update on recommendations for department head stipends. Sorry. An update to the stipend structure from a percentage-based pay structure to a stipend amount. <coughs> me for department chairs would be effective for the 25 24 25 school year <coughs> sorry a recommendation that the special ed department should have the stipend for each of the two department chairs <coughs> excuse me and a recommendation to have chairs for the ESOL that's English for speakers of other languages and the counseling departments mrs. Johnson also presented information on a paraprofessional wage analysis adjustments to the starting hourly rates for some paraprofessionals as well as revisions to some titles and daily hours work for paraprofessionals was recommended. Mr. Fox talked about the Merrill deconstruction asbestos abatement bid approval. The district received six bids and will be recommending dirty ducts cleaning and environmental incorporated for the asbestos abatement which uh, Mr. Nihans um, assured us is, is uh, in the budget. There was an annual review of business office partners with Mr. Nihans, financial partners, the services each of those provide the district, and the financial impact was discussed. And finally, there was a short discussion on visitor parking at Val Phillips. Um, the suggestion was to increase the visitor parking at Val Phillips in the parking lot to the south. Mm. Um, so that those, especially for those who are coming in to pick up a student or drop something off, you didn't have to park at the far south mm -hmm. end of the south parking lot. Um, the future next meeting would be Thursday, June 13th at 7.30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Herzog. I'm going to pull the... Uh, we have one person signed up this evening for the non-agenda related public forum. Mrs. Smiltnik, clearly state. Thank you for that. Uh, Mrs. Smiltnik, would you like to come up? Clearly state your name and address and the topic you wish to address. Have an individual age this time. This is just how long to help people understand what seven years means, and this is a copy of each. Thank you. Thank you. It's a district document, so don't print this. Thank you. Everybody buckled in because I talked fast. We're buckled. All right. Seven years is a very long time. Kids pass from preschool to middle school, middle to high school, graduation. Seven years ago, my family found out for the first time that our child would not learn to read in the Oshkosh Area School District. Our principal told us that uh, she would need outside help because Layla was struggling and he didn't have the resources that she needed. We quickly learned why. Her OASD teachers were trained to believe that reading and writing was natural. Kids would just get it. They could look at pictures for help. 
In reality, kids need explicit, systematic, sequential, multisensory instruction. We learned that seven years ago. It has taken seven years for OASD to come to that same conclusion. My son Gus's entire elementary career has passed by in seven years. He'll be finishing up at E. Cook next week. Before he was even an OSD student, our family knew the winning equation. When high impact teachers intentionally use instructional materials to engage students with rigor, build vocabulary, practice fluency, focus on comprehension, teach phonological awareness, teach decoding, teach sight recognition of high frequency words and more, that's when kids learn to read. Luckily, my family had the financial resources to send both of our kids to private uh, reading instructors who did just that. And our kids are achieving those high outcomes. In those same seven years, OSD student literacy achievements stalled. Our opportunity gaps widened. Some OSD kids in my daughter's second grade class of seven years ago are just now reading at a second grade level at the end of ninth grade. A lot of kids have been left behind in seven years. The window of early learning closes. Kids are placed on this track or that. Workplace, college, tech school, prison. So many futures determined in seven years. Sometimes it takes at least seven years to lay the groundwork for what is finally happening in OASD. Recently, leadership decided to move forward with the field test of Amplify by CKLA for its <coughs> K-5 literacy curriculum. This is a huge shift. This decision came after a lengthy and engaging committee process where perspectives from across OASD and the community were all welcomed. This is a first. Probably more importantly, the district released a position statement clearly defining what matters most in achieving high levels of literacy learning. Spoiler, it's the same stuff that I referenced earlier. I gave you each a paper copy of this statement because I cannot overemphasize how important it is that this district is saying these words. This is a true foundational shift in how OASD approaches literacy. After seven years, I still sit before you, holding you accountable to your students. You are entrusted with creating a system that will help our students be successful in life, or at least a system that will teach them to read. You set formidable literacy outcome goals ingrained in policy. Now is time to support the actions that will make those goals achievable. The board must support admin and teaching staff throughout the CKLA field test and beyond. And I expect you to be accountable for your words and to allocate resources, ensuring uh, that excellent teacher training and to facilitate the necessary change changes in philosophy and teaching practices. The high quality curriculum that CKLA provides is a comprehensive curriculum change and is an incredible start. We must build on this momentum. <coughs> now is the time to make real change to give all kids the, the opportunity to learn to read in the Oshkosh Area School District. They can't wait seven more years. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you much. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Very well timed, too. Holy smokes. I, I practiced. That was good. <laughs> comes in handy. Thank you very much. And we have no one signed up this evening for a gender-related public forum. Let's move to the consent agenda resolution. Uh, for the consent agenda, the board has been furnished background material on each item or has discussed it in a previous meeting. Those will be acted on upon, upon with one vote without discussion. And please remember that an 11 and 12 have been uh, removed from the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I'll so make a motion. Second. Okay. Was that right? Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Test. Aye. 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 Right. Aye. Aye. Wyman. Aye. Carlin. Aye. Stewart. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, first up is number 11, Merrill Middle and Elementary School Asbestos Abatement. Is there a motion? So moved. I'll second. Carolyn DeWitt. Discussion. Mr. Hess, Dr. Hess. So I, I asked to have this uh, pulled. I'm a historic preservationist. This is not something that I can support. I understand what's happening, but I can't support the removal of Merrill School. So I'm going to vote no on this, but I respect what you guys are doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Call the roll, please. Salaji? Aye. Wright? Aye. Wyman? Aye. Carlin? Aye. DeWitt? Aye. Herzog? Aye. Hess? No. Motion carries. Six to one. Thank you very much. Number 12, staffing additions for 2425. <coughs> Is there a motion? Moved. Second. Salaji? Second, right. Discussion? I'm actually happy that this was pulled. Um, I have a question. I don't know if um, 
Drew and Julie want to maybe come up. I, I just have a few questions in regards to it. And Julie was unable to be here oh, tonight, I so. I didn't um, look at the crowd. It's yeah, all the yeah. orange shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yes, no, so uh, yeah, Drew can uh, help support. Thank so, you. Yeah. So in, in reading um, the report and what was sent, I just am wondering if you are able to explain to me under letter E, number four, um, if you can kind of break that statement down for me in kid terms so I can just get a better understanding of. Sure, of where the, where the money is coming from. Correct. Uh, so we, um, within the budgeting process, we had conversations with Mr. Schmidt on the five-year tech plan, and he said that um, one of the things we could do within the five-year tech plan is um, not implement some of the elementary um, part of the plan due to phase two with the referendum, and we're going to have some consolidation potentially coming up. So we are delaying portions of that what was planned for this year spend um, which has shifted as he was describing earlier it's shifting to middle school and para professional Chromebooks and and technology um, so that is bringing in room for for us to make some adjustments so it's so I read that and I interpret it as though we are cutting expenditures because we are then going to rely upon a potential referendum to then pay those does that is that so like when I read this statement I'm I'm reading it as though um, we're reducing expenses currently right right now yes yep because we are then hopeful that a referendum will pass to then pay those expenditures that we're cutting we're not making plan spending now because if if phase two passes at this point we don't want brand new technology in buildings that we're going to have to take that off the wall and store somewhere for a period of time being brand new mm -hmm. while renovations and constructions happening to put now one-year-old technology back in or two-year-old technology back into place so it's more prudent um, in our opinion to hold off on purchasing for the elementaries that are going to be impacted with a potential referendum vote rather than buy something in advance and then have to react afterward with brand new half a million dollars worth of technology um, holding off on that potential purchase until after the referendum vote one way or the other um, if if the phase two wouldn't pass or does we now know what the timing of when we can put brand new technology into that those facilities does that make sense Yes, thank you. Yep. I Dr. have a, I have a follow-up question. Thank you. Um, with the closing of Washington Elementary School and the moving of students out of what is now Merrill Elementary and Webster Elementary, does that reduce the need for some of the classroom displays that are described in here? I'm going to phone a friend on that one and see if <laughs> Mr. Schmidt can come up and <laughs> answer that I'm one. I'm sorry I didn't ask that ahead of time. I just thought <laughs> of it right now. Um, so it, it overall, it reduces the number of classrooms that we're, that we're supporting. Okay. Um, but with, with the new building, that was our that was our plan was to replace the the equipment that goes in there. Mm -hmm. So we figured new building, new construction. Let's put new new equipment in there as well. Um, so those and then we have negotiated with our um, with our integration partners mm -hmm. to have them buy that equipment <coughs> back. Okay. So we'll we'll be getting we'll be getting some a refund back from our from our okay. partners on that equipment that's not being. So what I think I hear you saying is there, are, there is a cost savings because we're consolidating uh, three elementary buildings on the north side. 
correct. Okay. It's, it's, it costs less for us to outfit Menominee Elementary than it would for us to renovate those three schools. Thank you. Does that help, Mrs. DeWitt? Yes, thank okay. you. Sure. Mr. Uh, Dr. Hess. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I asked to have this poll. I, I do intend to support this, uh, but I was, I was kind of going back, and one, I was looking at some data today, and I was going back and reviewing board meeting minutes from the last year to try to catch up. It's taken me a while to catch up, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. Uh, and I saw this from last year, which kind of gave us, I think this was presented in April 26th of last year, which showed the declining enrollment over the course of the last what, roughly 15 years that we're, we've dropped 10%, and yet our, our teacher total number of teachers have increased roughly 8%. And I understand the thought process of it, the thought process of that. Uh, I also appreciate having gotten this, this literacy learning document because one of the first things that it talks about is John Hattie. <coughs> and I'm a big supporter of the concept of Hattie's visible learning stuff. And I know one of the conclusions that he, he came to that most people have a really hard time with is that class size struggles to really matter. And that is that to really make that matter, you have to make a substantial investment. You really have to reduce class size. So I appreciate that administration has gone through and selected these are, I, I presume, very specific key elements that they want to increase on. And I can support that. But my challenge to you would be, when I look at this, it feels like we could be running into a fiscal cliff. And I hope that next year we can take a very careful look, because I don't think we can continue to make these expenditures and add teachers. And simultaneously, we haven't substantially seen yet increase in achievement. So that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Call the roll. Right. Hi. Wyman. Aye. Carlin. Aye. DeWitt. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Hess. Aye. Zalaji. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Number 13, approval of bridges. Three, math curriculum adoption. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Ryan Zalaji. Discussion. Um, I guess I'm going to be supporting this. Um, I've been impressed with the data that we've received so far, uh, and I think that it'll be a good tool to help our students move forward um, in mathematics. So those are my comments. Questions for Dr. Coleman, Mrs. Cole? Dr. Herzog? Thank you. I would just like to commend and thank uh, Dr. Coleman on this uh, resolution and number 14 as well, which is the approval of illustrative math 360. Um, in less than a year, he has assembled um, a team um, and has overseen uh, some uh, implementation of this program in the classroom, uh, has gotten buy-in from, from staff, and has assured the uh, education committee that these materials do align with the state um, standards in math, which is critical if we're going to have effective professional development and we're going to see gains in student learning. So I want to thank you and all those who've worked with you, uh, whom you're representing here tonight, uh, to come forward at this point with these two recommendations. So thank you. Thank you so much. I would be remiss if I didn't say it's been a team effort, and I certainly want to thank uh, Director Cole, Julie Holmes, um, all of our directors who have been um, ambitiously working to turn the ship with the P around uh, very quickly. Thank you. It's a very exciting time. Yes. Call the roll. London. Aye. Carlin. Aye. DeWitt. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Hess. Aye. Salaji. Aye. Wright. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Number 14, approval of illustrative math 360 curriculum adoption. Motion? So moved. Second. Second. Carolyn DeWitt. Yep. Discussion?
Call the roll. Carlin? Aye. DeWitt? Aye. Herzog? Aye. Hess? Aye. Szilagyi? Aye. Wright? Aye. Wyman? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Number 15, approval of Mar You know what's really cool? When you get to an individually considered resolution and the case is presented so beautifully that we don't have to discuss it, that means you've done your homework and your presentation. We thank you for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number 15, approval of market salary adjustment for paraprofessional positions, title changes, and schedule change. So moved. Second. Discussion. Okay, Herzog, Herzog and Hess. Herzog and Hess. Thank you. I'll just say thank you for bringing this to us. Um, I value our paraprofessionals. We've mm -hmm. heard from them this year at these meetings, and so I look forward to voting yes on this. And I'll agree with what Liz said. Um, last, well, I don't know how many months ago, but when we had that listening session and the paraprofessionals brought all of their concerns forward to us, that was. Uh, that was a tough thing to hear them, you know, talking about their job and mm -hmm. um, how difficult it is. And I'm just happy that we're moving in the right direction, mm -hmm. you know, to try to put them in a better spot. So thank you for the turnaround on this. And um, this is a good step. Uh, were the paras involved in coming to this resolution? And are they happy with yes, what was um, decided? After the board meeting, we had a, a sent a communication. We knew that we couldn't meet with all 240 of them. So we sent a communication out and asked them to review the essential functions in their position descriptions. Mm -hmm. So each of the groups were able to review it, update it, and send those to our office. We then used that information to complete our full analysis. And then we most recently um, met with the OPEA, so the union representative. Right. Rep representatives um, had that conversation and most recently sent a communication out to Paris last Friday Great. Um, so just more questions about where they fell on the titles mm -hmm. um, but it seems very supportive of, of the information that was set forth awesome thank you I can imagine that uh, some of the job descriptions that you got back were very different than the ones that previously mm -hmm. existed yes yes and they all 18 of them have been updated yeah. yes call the roll DeWitt? Aye. Herzog? Aye. Sorry. Hess? Aye. Salaji? Aye. Wright? Aye. Wyman? Aye. Carlin? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, request for future agenda items. Dr. Herzog? Thank you. I have two. We, as a board, do self-evaluations twice a year. Mm -hmm. And we did one a couple of years ago with Patty Vickman. Um, a consultant with the Wisconsin Association of uh, School Boards, we had put together, uh, or she had helped us put together, a draft action plan on new board member orientation, and I think we need to revisit that and, and bring some closure to that. And then also, uh, we worked on an action plan in April of 2024 with Ted Knightsky the night we did our board self-evaluation, so I'd like us to have those come back so we can bring some closure to both of those and move forward. We have a TED meeting scheduled, don't we? Um, August. 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 August? Yes. August. August. And we also have a board self-evaluation meeting scheduled. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But bringing so those items. Yeah. Yep. Well, they could be at that board self-evaluation in June, or they could be on a regular board meeting, whichever our president and vice president and superintendent decide. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any announcements? Dr. Mrs. Carlin. Oh, I'll take Dr. Okay. Carlin. That's fine. Um, uh, several of us had the opportunity today to speak to some students about the role of the school board, and it was really fun. I love being in our schools, and I think all of you guys did a great job. Thank you. It was a great, it was great morning. Thank you. It was a very rewarding morning mm -hmm. spending some time with students. So. Okay, and we're going to adjourn to executive session to consider the employment, promotion, compensation, performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or excess responsibility. Uh, we have two dis personnel discussions to um, 
discuss and deliberating the negotiation purchasing of public properties the investing in public funds or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session we will be discussing negotiations for employee groups so moved second Carlin and Salachi all the roll DeWitt? Aye. Rizzo? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Thank you, Troop 610. Yeah.